Fabián. Uh, welcome everyone to the I2B2 Transmar Foundation community meeting. Uh, sorry, I had a computer glitch and had an actual crash on my Mac, which is quite unusual. Um, today is the October 2018 uh, meet, community meeting uh, for the foundation. We have a uh, long, uh, this is Rudy Poten's own, by the way. Um, we have a long, a uh, little longer than usual agenda. We have a number of topics to cover. And so we will uh, go through all these different pieces. Um, uh, and at the end, uh, towards the end, we will have uh, Doug McFadden is joining us and will give us a, a short presentation on the ACT Network. So without uh, further, let's uh, turn it over to Diane. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and uh, good morning to our West Coast people and good evening to our European folks. Um, and uh, it's a beautiful fall day here in, uh, in Boston and I'm sure winter is coming. So um, I want to jump in and uh, talk to you a little bit about the agenda. We'll talk about um, the, the new board members that um, were just elected, our new foundation members, um, give you an update on um, how the contributing sponsorship program is growing. Um, we'll, uh, Geneva is a couple of weeks away, so we'll give you um, a quick little um, you know, update on, on where that stands um, uh, and mention the foundation survey that we just sent out and, and hope that if you haven't filled out your survey, please do. And then um, Rudy will talk a little bit about the platforms and our new license. Um, and then I'm very happy to, to have uh, Doug McFadden here, um, who's the CIO of Harvard Catalyst, um, who's been working with um, ITB2 and Shrine for um, since the beginning, and he'll give you an update on the, the ACT Net network, which is a, a very exciting network. So, Rudy, we can go to the next slide. So the board members, we had a, a board election um, this summer, and you'll see uh, the list of the, the new uh, board of directors for the foundation. Um, the folks that are highlighted are the, um, the new um, uh, board members. Um, so of the board, we have 13 board members, and I just want to point out um, nine are from academic medical centers, uh, four from industry. Um, you know, we, we really look at the U.S. base and, and uh, Europe to make sure that we're trying to represent um, both sides. So 10 from U.S. and three from um, Europe. So we can go to the next slide, Rudy. So we had a, uh, a new um, members election as well um, just recently, and I will give you a little bit of information about that. So 31 new members were nominated from 23 organizations across US uh, and Europe, which is great. We're really trying to, to bring in you know, different people from different organizations and really get representation from Europe. Um, the election was held um, in September, and everybody that was nominated um, was voted in by the members. So now we have a total of 97 um, members. Go to the next slide. Um, I, again, of the 31 new members, um, 10 were from Europe, 21 US, um, nine from industry, and 21 from um, academic medical centers. Um, We've got to get through the Geneva conference, but after Geneva, um, one of the things I'd really like to do is um, have a, a members webinar where we really talk about the next steps and how the members can uh, work together. Um, the first one that we did, we um, we created uh, working the working groups that we have in place now, which ha have been very successful and have uh, been well attended. So I, I really want um, ideas from the, the members on how we can uh, work together and. and um, and uh, move things forward. So we can go to the next slide. So I think, um, and you can go, go to the next slide too, Rudy. Um, in, at the June meeting, uh, Zach Kohani um, kicked off the new um, contributing sponsor program uh, to help us uh, support the, your, the, the foundation. Um, listed are the benefits, so you get free tickets to the foundation and regular updates uh, to our roadmap and, you know, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, so recognition at the, the different meetings and the, um, the, the monthly community meeting. 
Um, and what is it, what is it support? It's really supporting the basic operations of the foundation. So the monthly calls, the training programs, you know, organizing the spring and fall events, um, you know, maintaining the website and supporting the youth working groups and the, the project management committee. So it's really basic support. And if you go to the next slide, Rudy, um, I'm pleased to say that um, as of uh, June, we have um, 11 sponsors um, that are contributing to the foundation, um, three from Europe, eight from U.S., four industry, and seven ap academic medical centers. So a, a nice, a very nice mix and um, really appreciate their support um, and would uh, would love to, to, to post your logo here. So um, please sign up if, if you can. So I think go to the next slide, Ruby. And Ruby, I think you'll take it from here. <laughs> okay, thanks, Diane. So hopefully you all know we have our next um, meeting is coming up in uh, two weeks, I think it is. Um, it will be October 31st and November 1st uh, in Geneva, Switzerland uh, at Campus Biotech, uh, a very lovely uh, facility. Um, and the program is, is set. Uh, you can see a lot of the details on the webpage. Um, I think registrations were supposed to end, but I think you can still register if you'd like. Um, right now, we have 142 people registered, which is a pretty good size um, showing for us. Uh, and But, uh, you know, we'd love to have you if you're still interested in coming. So please uh, consider registering. Uh, we've got uh, a number of keynote speakers uh, who are going to cover a, a wide range of topics. Uh, and uh, we're, we're confident that it's going to be, you know, a very interesting meeting. Um, we do have talks uh, on, on quite a few topics. Um, and it spans both I2B2 and Transmart um, in terms of the, the subject areas that uh, people will be talking about. Um, in particular, I just wanted to call out that the foundation will be presenting a couple of uh, sessions in Geneva. Uh, on the morning of the first day, we will talk about and present the foundation product uh, platform roadmap on where we are today with the planning uh, uh, on the roadmap. And I think that will be interesting to, to all of you. Um, who will be attending. And also uh, on the second day in the afternoon, we'll dedicate uh, a couple of hours to really talking about, you know, kind of uh, where where we are, where the found, where the roadmap is, uh, where the future of the foundation, and uh, hopefully have a good uh, open discussion and really start to, to think about, you know, and, and share with, with the attendees, you know, kind of where we're going. Uh, there will also be a lunch meeting um, when discussing uh, Glowing Bear. Um, with the hive um, we also plan to broadcast um, the uh, the event uh, so and, and hopefully record it so if you cannot make it uh, and you're uh, available during these times there will be shortly uh, information on how to to join uh, and listen in to the the conference and um, also we'll have the recordings posted as usual uh, on our website and our youtube channel so please, you know, consider uh, if you if you cannot make it to uh, to, to stay and look in at the uh, at the meeting. Uh, everyone, uh, hopefully on the call, should have received an invitation to a new survey that we've put together on the foundation. We're we're trying to gather information uh, about who's using the system and get some of your ideas uh, about um, you know kind of where you are today and where things are, are going in the future. Uh, we did send this out to our usual mailing list of over 1,500 people. Um, only so far, it's been uh, less than a week, I guess, that it's been out there. We've had about 37 responses so far, uh, and we will be nagging you the rest of the week if you haven't responded. So please think about responding. Uh, I, mean, I put there the, uh, the link to the survey, uh, but you should have it in an email already. Uh, so um, if, if you have not, uh, if you can let one of us know, we'll get you the link uh, right away. But you will be getting uh, reminders if you have not uh, responded. Um, of these 37 responses, I thought you might be interested to see, you know, uh, this can show you the kinds of questions we're asking, what the responses are so far. Certainly um, heavily weighted towards academia and nonprofit uh, research centers uh, so far. Uh, you can see a couple of vendors. Have replied. No one from any of the government labs or pharma biotech. So we're, we're hoping to get a little more diversity uh, in the responses over the next week or so. 
Uh, we're, we're planning to have the keep it open uh, until the end of the week, although we, we may let it run in the next week. Um, we asked what systems are you using? And again, uh, just from these, these 37 companies who are, are people who responded, uh, you can see that uh, you know quite a few use uh, the, the, the largest uh, deployed is the site v 2 but Transmart is pretty close and uh, quite a few uh, groups are using both. A number of people have tried the, the beta uh, release of the I2B2 Transmart uh, platform. And then we asked, you know, uh, we put a number of platforms on there to see what else people were using, you know, uh, Odyssey and Core, Core Net and, and, and like, and people were also able to write in different things that they're using. So I think it's interesting to, to see, you know, a little bit about that. Um, and then we asked uh, the two usual questions of how, you know, what are the strengths of our platforms across all of the, um, the different platforms that, and uses that people are using. And we got, you know, a number of answers here. Um, the one that you can't see as you go down this list is that uh, the, the the one bar um, is not labeled is, is really the, the fact that it's it's it deployed by so many institutions. And I think that means that people are interested in using, you know, using the platform to share data um, a bit more, but, you know, having customizable ontologies and the schema, the plugin architecture, all are, you know, good things that people are, are interested in. And then we asked, you know, what are the weaknesses they see? And uh, loudly was the roadmap. They, I think there's a lot of interest in understanding kind of where we're going with the platforms. And we will, um, you know, the, that's why there's such a, a focus at the, uh, at the Geneva meeting on both talking about kind of where we are with our roadmap and then opening up the discussion about where we should be going. Um, but then obviously some other areas of the, that we really need to focus on in terms of installation, documentation, um, ontologies, uh, help desk, et cetera. So um, that just gives you some of those information. But the you know the good inf the good news here is that at least the people responding are all not only actively using uh, this the systems, but also seeing growth both in terms of number of users uh, using the system and also the types of things that they're doing. So you know this is this is the our community. This is why you know we we put a lot of effort into to trying to you know keep keep the foundation moving, keep the you know our our care of the of the different platforms um, really um, you know moving ahead and then trying to be uh, to listen to what you know what is needed. And so um, you know our, our our need to to keep you know our focus on evolving these platforms is is really important to the community. So uh, again, if you haven't responded, we really would love to hear from you and. Um, We'll actually, you know, we will publish a report on the official final um, results uh, when they come come out. So, but you'd like to hear about that. Um, next topic, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the platforms uh, just for a, a couple minutes. Um, we have um, finally, uh, you know, we've been trying to to figure out what the licenses need to be on the platforms, how the best way to go forward, uh, and so. The, um, the, we have a PMC council, it's the PMC chairs, um, you know, working with Diane and, and Keith Elliston has been uh, chairing that, that group uh, discussing, you know, what the best, you know, way forward in terms of our licensing. Um, after a lot of review and a lot of discussions, um, our, our uh, statement here you can read uh, is that, you know, if our, our preferred licensing is Apache 2, and as we do new things, uh, we will try to make it, you know, a, a very um, open um, licensing uh, available for all of the, the work that, that we get, you know, uh, contributed uh, or developed by the, the, the foundation. Um, but we have two legacy code bases that are under different licenses and Transmart uh, continues to be under GPL v3. And that will continue. Uh, that's that based on on the history. It's it's really not an option. So the transfer will continue on that license. But um, as we get contributions for plugins and things that are not part of the core code base, uh, we're hoping that these will be contributed as Apache two licenses. Uh, I2B2 uh, has been under a Briggins and Will Will Women's um, developed uh, a private license and. Um, that the work there is now to move that with the next release of I2B2 to, to a Mozilla 2.0 license, which is um, a much more a more standard uh, license. 
and compatible with the GPL v3. And then all newly developed software, we're, we're trying to, to push to, to have it available under Apache 2. So for example, those of you who've looked at ITBT Transmar um, that Paula VX Group is, is building at Harvard, uh, their picture um, uh, API is all being built um, for version 2.0 of, of picture that will all be released under an Apache license. So that's basically, you know, where we stand on the licensing, uh, at least, you know, it may not be completely ideal for everything we wanted to do, but it's it's now at least well defined, and this is how we're going to move ahead. Um, just a, a quick note on um, the the platform kind of roadmaps. Uh, this shows where we are with the current releases. Uh, ITP2 1.7.10 came out recently, and um, ho hopefully. By the end of the year, 1.7.11 will come out. Uh, I'm assuming that those of you ITB2 know what these are. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail today, um, but we will talk more about it uh, in Geneva. Um, Transmar is at 16.3 for the latest um, official release, which includes Oracle and um, uh, Postgres support. Um, we are working with a 16.4 which will be a version that is completely uh, compatible with the I2B2 Transmart platform. And so uh, once that's released, um, when, when you look at the I2B2 Transmart platform, uh, that will be using the official um, released version of I2B2 and the official released version of Transmart as part of the, the, the system. We have released the 17.1 server uh, that was developed um, earlier. Uh, and but it, it has brought some data model changes um, that uh, we've been trying to 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 work through. Uh, we've had a lot of active discussion in the last couple of months uh, about how to bring these together, and there's a working group um, trying to to work towards um, a a, um, a a common solution here. This brings uh, more formal um, use of studies uh, into the data model, um, but. Uh, sorting out, you know, how to do that in the most efficient way that that um, is compatible with I2B2, uh, as well as um, supports all the necessary uh, security access uh, and consent, uh, patient consent information, uh, has been a challenge. And so uh, we have an active development uh, teams working uh, that include I2B2 development, uh, Transmart development. Uh, as well as the uh, I2B2 Transmart team at Harvard. Uh, so we're we're hoping to have that all, you know, uh, having a, a good path forward uh, soon, very soon. I2B2 Transmart, they released the preview uh, back in June, and they're uh, they're trying to get their first full production release uh, of I2B2 Transmart ready for at least a preview at the um, at the Geneva meeting. So that's where we are. Give you a little bit of an idea of where, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, some of the directions that we're going. And so for the full roadmap, uh, again, uh, come to Geneva or dial into Geneva and we'll start to, you know, we'll have uh, both a, you know, presentation of exactly where things are as well as some, uh, you know, an, an open session on discussing where, you know, where we, we would all like to see it go. Okay, so uh, that's um, what I had prepared. Uh, now going to turn it over to Doug. Uh, it'll just take me a second to just get uh, his presentation up. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sounds fine. Good. All right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna transfer it to you, right, Doug? Are you giving me uh, control yes. to run the presentation, yes. or should yes. I run Is it locally? Okay? Um, you'll run it locally, but. Is that okay? Or... Yeah. Okay, hold on. Firing it up now. All right. Does everybody see the intro slide? Yes. Can you do um, a presentation mode? Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. Perfect. Well, All right. we're seeing your. You're seeing it in observer mode. You are. Yeah. Aren't you? No, we're yeah. All right. So switch screens. Here, hold on. I will um, quit screen sharing. Uh, which one is that? Sorry for the delay. See if this works better. Do you see the uh, full screen or still seeing the presenter see, screen? What I see is mirror displays is still up. Yeah, sorry for the technical stuff. All right, if this isn't, uh, do you get the full screen or are you seeing the, the presenter's version? I'm, I'm still seeing, you, you, it seems to be frozen, the sharing. Let me um, try to just reshare it with you. Okay, thank you. Okay. You try to reshare now? Yeah. All right. Are you seeing me? Yes. Yes, that's better. Okay, okay. sorry. Go ahead. We'll go with this <laughs> in the interest of time. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate the. Uh, opportunity to talk a little bit about the uh, act, the work we're doing under ACT. Um, it's an exciting project. It's uh, been underway for uh, a few years now. Um, this is a um, project that is uh, based out of the University of Pittsburgh. Steve Reese is the primary PI, and uh, there are three others, uh, Bob Toto from UT Southwestern, Gary Firestein from UC San Diego, and Lee Nadler from uh, here at Harvard, um, we uh, this has been funded by NCAS uh, in two rounds. There was a proof of concept round, and now we're into the the full full scale round. So I'll just go into a little bit of details about sort of what our objectives are from the grant and uh, where we're going, and a little bit about the technology we're using. Uh, so yeah, reviewing the goals of ACT, um, uh, understanding our vision, and a little bit about our goals. So the uh, ACT stands for Accrual to Clinical Trials. This was the primary uh, sort of focus for creating the ACT network is to support accrual uh, to multi-site trials, typically. Um, the, uh, the technology that we're putting in place is, has multiple other purposes, and they're, they're being identified now, and there may be sort of additional uses for ACT coming down the pike. but. Um, the primary focus today is on essentially providing access to the EMR data across a wide variety of CTSA sites, perhaps all of them eventually, uh, using the, this technology in multiple stages to uh, determine study feasibility and then identify sites that might have sufficient patient cohorts, um, identifying the specific eligible patients at those sites, um, allowing for re-identification, 
of those folks and then eventually recruit to um, a study. So the uh, uh, ACT is, uh, a, we believe, the largest network for cohort discovery, maybe the largest network um, out there. Don't know the, the total sizes. We're at um, 33 or 34, depending on how you count right now, number of sites. Um, and uh, this is, you know, like I said, it's primarily sponsored, it is sponsored by the NIH NCAT and uh, um, focused on accrual of clinical trials, multi-site clinical trials. So in a nutshell, um, what ACT allows an investigator to do is from their desktop, uh, do a query across, the numbers are off a little bit here, the 21 CTSA hubs were actually up to 33 at least now. Um, uh, execute that query in real time, get results back, you know, in seconds or a minute or two. Um, really handy for doing a feasibility analysis and also sort of getting a better understanding of uh, the number of patients that exist out there at these different sites if uh, um, it looks like it's desirable to do a multi-site recruitment uh, process that you now know uh, different locations where there might be a suitable population. The, uh, you know, the investigator simply sits down in front of uh, something that looks a lot like an I2B2 front end. It's the Shrine front end. Um, they uh, phrase their query and uh, execute it across the 33, 34th sites. And then through um, a multi-step process um, are able to both uh, find a cohort and uh, re-identify that cohort. Uh, Sean Murphy, who may be on the phone today, uh, is in charge of the I2B2 plugin development that specifically allows one to go from a uh, uh, general uh, specification for a potential cohort locally to um, a finely filtered cohort and then re-identification. Uh, so, uh, some of the key strengths about ACT are um, end users can do it or, you know, en when enabled can uh, do it uh, self-service. Uh, they can do iterative searches so they can refine um, their search essentially through, you know, a sequence of activities and that can occur in just a few minutes. Um, the, it, all the great results come back, of course, uh, essentially in real time. Uh, and uh, we're growing the number of sites within the network uh, fairly rapidly. We did 21 a few weeks ago. We now have, or a few months ago, we now have uh, 34 um, and uh, more in the works. Uh, the, uh, I won't go into a lot of detail regarding the ontology, but the ontology is uh, a uh, multi-dimensional ontology with uh, Demographic diagnoses, uh, procedures, labs, and meds. It's uh, both being expanded, and um, there's, a, I believe, a, uh, a, some emphasis on trying to align it and harmonize it with um, other similar kinds of ontologies. Um, as with any network this size, um, with this federated network, you know, things happen. All types are given up, are up at any given time. Uh, we try our best to identify, you know, issues that cause downtime and help people stay up. But um, it is, um, you know, there will be some variability to that. We've just done a new shrine release that actually makes um, the fact that some sites that are not available or having an issue um, much easier to identify and to get the information from the other sites more quickly. Um, of course, the build, this is all, you know, just like traditional ITB2, like cost medical record data. Um, the queries are as effective as the coding of the data that comes from the EMR um, and knowing how to phrase your queries um, is a skill that gets developed over time. Um, so this map is already out of date. The Many of the sites listed for staging for ACT are now in the 34. Um, but you can see the list of uh, those that have been there for a while, um, either are on now or in process, and then ones that are coming up in the near future. There's uh, the goal is to get all the TTSAs um, on board, um, which 
which would be just about 60 sites total. Uh, right, so we've got a few pop-ups here. Um, over 440 queryable data elements, so that's uh, uh, an ontology reference there. Okay, so goals in the near future. Um, so we have uh, essentially 34 sites in the network right now. Um, there's a, uh, a working group within ACT that's very focused on dissemination, marketing, training, um, and they're incrementally reaching out to those sites and uh, uh, essentially assisting those sites in doing a full release to their end user base. Um, we have, uh, I think, on the order of six to eight sites that are fully disseminated now, and the rest of the 34 are in queue. Um, we're constantly onboarding new sites. So I think we have around 14 that are in the next wave to be onboarded. Um, there's um, uh, there's also governance and uh, working group that um, is uh, a key part of ACT and making sure that the uh, rules for the road for everybody who joins ACT are consistent and um, meet the goals of the uh, multi-site uh, recruitment, uh, including the use of the plugins. Uh, we're um, not just sort of using technology that stands today. We um, are adopting new versions of Shrine, ICB2, and the ontology as um, we today sort of, you know, receive improvement. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail about the Shrine release that we just did and the improvements that that makes. Um, and then uh, getting the ICB2 plugins that help refine the patient set is another one of our goals coming up in the near future. Um, all right, so uh, that's sort of the basic overview of the ACT network. Um, I will, I'm, I'm just gonna dive into a little bit of the most recent Shrine release and then sort of leave time at the end for questions around um, ACT or Shrine. Um, so this is the uh, Shrine web client. Um, you can see that um, a query has been phrased here for um, all people that are 68 years old. Um, this is very familiar, obviously, for folks who do the uh, I2B2 uh, web client or in Transbar. Um, and here is a um, results screen. I've expanded the lower right pane. Um, and um, it, this is the brand new version of Shrine. And while I did not build in uh, detailed animations here, you would have, on this results screen, you would have seen each site individually return um, its results uh, when they were ready. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, a list of sites, and two are still working, and the rest have completed. Um, so um, much more impressive when you do this in real time. Uh, wasn't quite ready to do a real-time demo today, though, unfortunately. Um, all right, really quickly, so how does this whole network work? Um, there is a uh, hub that all of the ACT sites connect to. Um, the user uses that Shrine Web query interface to phrase a query um, with the ontology up there in the left pane. The query obviously gets uh, fully phrased in the upper right pane. Uh, that query gets sent out through their site, through all the other sites, the rest of the network. Um, they return results, and the results show up in that lower right pane. And then, of course, there's previous queries uh, where you can go back and get any of your previous results. And architecturally, each site is made up of a Shrine adapter, uh, a mapping layer, and then a research data warehouse. Right now, I believe all of them are ICB2. Um, there is some discussion about whether ICB2 on top of OMOP or other things of that sort um, will uh, be effective in the future for some of the other CPSAs to join. Um, and I think outside of, yeah, just some high-level uh, restatement of sort of ACT, um, the uh, one important thing, because this is a large-scale network, and we have a lot of sort of moving parts, both the Shrine stuff, software, the ITB software, and the ontology. We actually have multiple, uh, and we're bringing new sites on board. We have multiple networks. So everything I've been telling you so far is about the production network. We have casting staging networks that we use for 
basically managing new versions of software and getting new, new sites up and running. Um, and of course, yeah, those are all some of the cool features about Try. And that is it for my slides. I'd be glad to open up for questions now. Okay, thanks, Doug. Um, so you can ask a question one of three ways. You can raise your hand and I will unmute you and let you ask it. You can type a question into the question window or you could post a question in the chat window. So anyone with questions? Not seeing any questions. Okay, so okay, um, yeah. if people are um, shy to ask questions, uh, uh, I'll uh, sort of uh, offer a couple of things. Um, our um, our open so the the Axe Network. You can find out more about the Axe Network at. Um, uh, I'll pull up the URL and I'll send it. You know, I'll send it, uh, uh, some additional information about sort of additional uh, points of data that you can get um, to Rudy, who can distribute it to everybody. Um, right. You're certainly welcome to send me an email. Uh, so Rudy will have my uh, email to distribute to, so you can do that. We do have one question, Doug. Um, What's cool. keeping C, what's keeping CTSAs from joining ACT? Um, uh, great question. Um, so uh, it's really a, sort of an operational capacity. We um, we are adding them in waves. We had two waves of CTSAs under the proof of concept period, and we've added a third wave now under this new funding model. Um, it's you know there. Many of the CTSAs have familiarity with the underlying technologies of working with EMR data and I2B2 and Shrine, and most of those are on the network now. Um, many of the sites that are remaining have less familiarity, and so we're um, sort of working with them in a, a, a bit of a you know hands-on support kind of model with them to get everything up and running. Um, and so um, it's just it, a lot of it is really just sort of the incremental process of uh, helping these sites uh, do what they need to do. Uh, because you know we want a stable production environment, we have certain versions of I2B2 and Shrine that we need people to work with, and same thing with the ontology. And so making sure that they're using those and they're effective in getting them uh, up and running uh, is, is essentially the, the process we're going through to to uh, add them now. And of course, for stability in the production network, we do this work with them in the stage environment until they're solid, and then we move them to production. Okay. Other questions? I don't see anything else in. Okay, well, thank, thank you very much, Doug. Okay, cool. Really helpful and informative, all right. So let's open it up. Any other questions in general? Anyone wants to ask of Diane or me, or we go back to Doug again? I'm not seeing any other questions. Okay, Diane, you want any last comments? Yeah, just want, I want to thank everybody for joining today. Um, if you're uh, headed up to Geneva, um, I will see you there, and um, that should be a great conference. Um, if you, again, um, if you haven't filled out that survey, it's really, really, really important um, that we, you know, we get folks to, um, to fill those out and give us some information about, you know, what they're thinking. Um, about it. Um, also, if you're a member, um, I'm going to be tapping you in the next couple of months to get together and, and try to figure out what the, what our next step is. So if you can uh, start to think about ways that um, people can work together, different working groups that would make sense, um, that would really be appreciated. Um, other than that, I hope you have a really great day or, or um, evening, depending on where you are. 
Thank you, Diane. Uh, I've posted the link to the survey in the chat screen, chat window, and I'll leave that there for a, a minute before I close it down. But um, I think we're done. Thank you, everyone. And we will, uh, if not, if we don't see you in Geneva, we'll see you back here maybe in a, next month. Thank you.